So on this channel, I've shared a lot of free tools and resources with you, but it's been a while since I've made a video showing the step-by-step -step process to go from idea all the way to finished t-shirt design using only free tools. And that's exactly what I'm going to cover in this video today. We'll start off with finding some inspiration and ideas for the design, then we'll go ahead and check those for trademarks. I'll show you how to generate an AI graphic for free, increase the quality of that graphic, remove the background, and then save the final design at the right dimensions. So step number one is coming up with some ideas. And as an example right here, I've chosen the pirate niche to create a design for, because it's the kind of niche that I really like going after. It has a very passionate audience. And it is an evergreen niche, meaning it can get sales throughout the entire year. The sales are not linked to a specific event, which means that if you can get some designs to sell in this kind of niche, then you're usually going to have a regular income from those designs, dare I say, passive income moving forward. So first thing you can do to try and come up with some ideas in terms of what phrases to add to your design is go to chat GPT. You can do this with the free version as well. You can literally just ask it, give me some funny phrases and puns for pirate t-shirt designs. Now be aware here that a lot of the stuff that AI comes up with is not necessarily going to be good. Some of the phrases might not be as funny or the, you know they might not really resonate if they're on t-shirts. So it can be hit and miss just to warn you but i'll show you a little other method as well so first of all we've got a hoi matey which yeah it's, it's simple and classic as it describes it here it fits pirates but it's not really funny enough in my opinion shiver me timbers also typical pirate phrase but not that funny in my opinion pirate by choice seize the day i quite like this one it's a little bit better yeah it's a bit of a pun and i could see that working maybe with a with a pirate ship playful wordplay buccaneer and beers keep calm and sail on. I quite like that one because it's kind of a common t-shirt design phrase. I'm here for the booty. I think that one is quite good because it's got a bit of an innuendo, a bit of a pun in there. And those kind of things can work really well on t-shirts. Sail fast, loot slow. That's a typical AI phrase, which might seem okay on the surface, but I can't see that doing really well on a t-shirt, to be honest. Are you ready? I actually quite like that. It's quite simple, but you know, the R thing it is going to sell well on shirts for pirates. If you look at the marketplaces, you probably see quite a lot of them that have this word as part of the design. And there's a bunch more ideas right here. Party time. That's quite cool for like a birthday themed shirt, potentially something for kids. But yeah, anyway, so this kind of shows you what to do right here on ChatGPT. You type this in a few times and even with the free version, you should get a few ideas back. Some of them will be rubbish, but you might find like two or three good phrases in there that you could note down. Another thing you can do is head to Pinterest and just type in pirate meme, right? So your niche plus meme or funny, something like that. And you will typically find a few ideas on Pinterest. And some of these might only exist as a meme, but maybe no one's put them on a t-shirt design yet. For example, this one right here, to R is human, to R is pirate. I don't even get that phrase fully, but let's click on it. It's had 500 saves. I need 600 saves right here, 60 repins. So I guess people who like pirates probably find this funny. And it's, it's one phrase to consider. Doesn't mean you have to copy this design exactly as it is, but it's worth taking note of the phrase because it seems like people who like pirates also like this phrase if it shows up that high up on Pinterest. Here we've got a cat wearing a um, pirate outfit that says grips your treasure aggressively. That's an example of a meme that wouldn't really work on a t-shirt, right? That phrase that only really works as a meme on the internet, not really on a shirt. Uh, to the plank with ye. Ah, all right, that's, that's quite a funny one. And we've, again, got a cat yeah generally i think we've got obviously quite a few instances of, of jack sparrow you're going to see that but also animals so there's a bunch of cats wearing these uh, pirate outfits and we've got a hamster right here that looks quite funny jack sparrow again i can't sell anything with him on there and we've got bring me that booty up here so the same phrase that was suggested by chat gpt and it's a cat wearing a pirate hat so maybe that is a potential idea for a t-shirt design i think sort of mixing really popular animals with a broad topic like this can often be a good way to go about things kind of cross niching two very popular evergreen niches and i think that phrase also has potential let's see has this been saved yeah this has been saved a thousand times 220 repins so yeah it definitely resonates with the target audience by the looks of it what's this me and my parrot girlfriend holding hands me baby your hands are so cold her that me hook <laughs> okay Right, that's a funny meme, but it's, yeah, I, don't, I can't really see that working on the t-shirt. Anyway, so this just shows you the process of a few things you can do to, to come up with ideas and phrases rather than 
just looking at the bestseller on Amazon and copying the bestseller. You know, try some of these alternative methods to find some new and funny ideas that potentially haven't been done before. Some of them have probably been done in the past or do exist on the marketplaces, but this is definitely a good way to do some research away from the markets. And on Pinterest, you can also get a bit of validation depending on how many people have saved or pinned these memes. Step number two is checking our phrase for trademarks. And I'm using TM Hunt for this. By the way, all of the tools that I'm mentioning in this video are linked in the description for easy access. And whilst you're there, there's also a link to sign up to my free email newsletter, where not only do you get access to multiple free email mini courses about different topics related to print and demand, but you also get access to a free spreadsheet with over a thousand evergreen niches. But let's get back to checking a phrase for trademarks. So what you have to do right here on TM Hunt is head to split search and then type in the phrase. So I'm probably going to use bring me that booty and we hit search right here and it might show up a long list of trademarks for you. But a lot of these are possibly not even relevant. For example, the design type trademarks are not important. And some of these are also not even registered. And there's a quick filter to uh, kind of narrow this down. And it's this green button right here. So if you click set to live and text, now it says no matching records found perfect. So that means this phrase right here is clean. Nothing, nothing inside of it is trademarked and we can use this on a shirt, which concludes this step right here. And now we can move on to actually creating our graphic. So step number three is generating a graphic. And I'm going to do this with Flux Pro, which you can use for free on the Glyph website. And if you don't like Flux Pro, or if you run out of your daily uses right here on Glyph, there is also some other alternatives. I actually made a video about a month ago sharing five different AI art generators that you can use for free. So check that out if you haven't seen it. But here, I'm just going to write a prompt to generate the kind of pirate themed cat that I'm going to use in my design. And I'll probably add the text in later. You can add text as you can see right here with Flux as well, but sometimes it's easier to just add that once we've upscaled and removed the background. So let's go ahead and write out a prompt right here. So start off with a vintage t-shirt design graphic of a cute cat blue wearing a pirate hat eye patch. Cat is shown in front of a red circle. So let's also do muted colors, isolated and white background right there we go let's uh, go ahead and run this glyph fairly simple straightforward prompt by the way if you struggle with writing prompts yourself i also have a bunch of free prompt pdf guides on my website philipandes.com that you can download you've got some pre-made prompts you just have to change the topic and some of the features of that prompt to match your niche and then you should have an easier time coming up with prompts yourself so there we go i think that's already a decent result but it looks maybe perhaps a bit too childish too cartoonish so let's add some more keywords to kind of get more of the vintage style right here. So changed it from cute to proud cat, but a distressed as well, old school retro, just to try and get this looking a little bit less childish. Let's run that again. This is also to show you that you rarely get a perfect result first try with any of these AI art tools. It's usually a case of trial and error, iterating your prompt throughout to try and get closer to the result that you had in mind. Right, that's definitely better. It's not as childish as the one before. It's still not quite as vintage as I would like it to be, but it's a better result. So let's run this again, see if we get um, another decent result. By the way, if you don't like the fact that your results right here are shown publicly on this Glyph website, you can also go back and delete them. So just Click on these dots right here, hit delete, and then no one can copy the image of the prompt. Here we've got another result. I think that actually looks pretty cool as well. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and save this right here. I can download it with this button at the top. And then again, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and delete these from the history. But there we go. I might take this as well, uh, just in case. I would prefer to use that. Let's go ahead and download it right here. And there we go, that's it. And that's it in terms of generating AI graphics with Flux. But again, if you need some more help with this, I have made a lot of tutorials in the past showcasing different free AI art generators. Next up, we need to go ahead and increase the quality of our graphic because the output is typically about 1000 pixels, which is not good enough to be printed on t-shirts. And for increasing the quality, there's two options. You can either vectorize or you can upscale. The problem with vectorizing is that there's no amazing free vectorizers that get really good results. So in this tutorial, I'm going to do upscaling instead. And the two best free upscalers, in my opinion, are Upscale, which is the website I'm on right now, or dgb.lol, which I've made a few tutorials about in the past 
as well. Now, Upscale is a software that downloads to your device, you install it, and then you use your own machine, your own computer to upscale the graphics. If you have a really old PC or an old laptop, this might not work for you. In that case, you have to use dgb.lol. It takes a bit longer on there to actually upscale your graphics, but at least it's free and you don't have to use your own device. If you want to use Upscale though, you can head to their homepage right here and then click on desktop. And then you've got the options right here for Linux, Mac, or Windows to download the install file. Now, some people have been saying that the Mac version is now paid, which seems that way. If you click on Mac right here, it brings you to the, the Apple store or, or App Store, whatever, and then it says $12, I think, to purchase. But you can just click on alternative downloads right here and then scroll down to DMG. And then if you click on DMG, download that file and just click on that, it will install upscale and you can still use it for free. You don't have to go through the app store. So don't be fooled by that. But yeah, in my case, I would just have to click on Windows, wait for it to download, install that, and then we can go ahead and drop our graphic in there, which I'll show you now. So here we go. I've gone ahead and opened upscale on my device. You can do batch upscale with this as well, where you essentially select a folder with lots of designs in it, and then it does all of those in bulk. In this case, I'm just do going to do uh, one at a time. All you do is drag and drop your image into the center right here. Then you can select a, a model. The default one is actually really good to be fair, but if you don't like the results, you can test out any of these other models as well. And I'm using 5X right here for the image image scale slider and we just use the same output folder as the image is saved in so it's going to go from a thousand to five thousand pixels which is perfect we'll hit upscale right here and then we just have to wait a minute and the time this takes is dependent mm -hmm. on your gpu how fast your pc is essentially and there we go so done you get like a before and after but it's a bit hard to see on this small screen so there we go i'll do that for the other graphic as well because i've not decided yet which one i want to use and you basically do the same with your graphic and then make sure that in the final design you actually use the version that has been upscaled so in order to remove the background and add a phrase as well, I'm going to be using Photo P. This is a web browser based Photoshop alternative. It can do almost everything that Photoshop can do and you can use it free. So in order to get started here, we click on new project and then we need the right dimensions up here. So 4,500 pixels for the width and 5,400 pixels for the height. Change this to 300 DPI and we'll just start off with a white background. We'll hit create on this and then drag and drop our design of choice onto the canvas right here. Now there's a bunch of different ways to go about removing the background. And by the way, I've, I've used the upscale version right here. This is not the old low quality version that's important to keep track of. So one thing you can do is head to select and remove BG. That's kind of a shortcut, which sometimes it'll work and get decent results. Like here, it actually did a really good job. Occasionally it won't work as well. Another option you have is the magic wand tool. If you click on this, you essentially want to play around with the tolerance setting and click on the background color. And then yeah, here it's kind of selecting a lot of the graphic as well. So I would have to turn down the tolerance, let's try 20 instead. Click on the background again, that looks a little bit better. Essentially the process here is you try to find a sweet spot where it only selects the background. You can also select contiguous, which means it's not going to, yeah, it's not going to go and select something in the center. It will just go as far as it gets right here on the outskirts essentially. And then once you've found a setting that works quite well for your graphic, you would have to go to select inverse. And then down here at the bottom of the layers panel, you click add raster mask. And there we go. It's also done a decent job of removing the background. By the way, if you struggle with this, I also have a couple of videos that just focus on removing backgrounds and multiple ways to do that on my channel. But let's go ahead, go back a few steps because I actually quite like the um, original result right here with select remove BG. I also want to try this out on a different color background just to see what it looks like on something darker. Yeah, we do have a little bit of a messy edge down here with some white bits being left over and there's a lot of like random pixels. So quick way to fix that if you've got a messy edge like that is just erase it from the mask. So we can click into the mask right here on this layer and I'm going to use the rectangle select and then just draw a box like this of the part that I want to erase and then control backspace. There we go. That should delete it if you have the right color selected right here. You need to have white selected at the top. If you have black selected at the top, then it would fill that space back in. As you can see, it brings back the entire background color as well. Essentially swap that here so that white is in the foreground and then we can delete parts of this design or the mask. And there we go. I think that's 
pretty good job. That was fairly easy, considering it's not the cleanest edge on this graphic. And now we can go about adding the phrase right here. So now to add our phrase to this graphic and finalize the design, we need to add a text layer. So we can do that by clicking on the type tool right here and then just click on the artboard. By default, the size will be quite low. So we have to change this to about 800 to fit our t-shirt a bit better. And then we'll confirm this right here. Then we can uh, double click into the text layer and we can start typing out our phrase. So I'll put bring me at the top right here, hit confirm for this. As you can see, there's not a lot of space for the text right here. So we need to probably make this graphic smaller. I'm going to click on the graphic and then hit control T that opens up these bounding boxes and then we can just drag down right here to have this at a smaller size. So with the font as well, or the text, one thing to note is you can change the font in here. There's a lot of pre-installed ones. I'm using a font called Creepster. I think that suits this graphic quite well. You can also load your own fonts into Photopea. And I've got a bunch of playlists on my channel showing you free for commercial use fonts for lots of different topics, styles, and themes. So check out those videos if you're struggling with finding a decent font for free. So now we'll duplicate this text layer down. I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard then click on the layer and as you can see it duplicates like that i'll also hold shift now to keep it in line with the with the layer at the top and place it down here i'm going to change this i'm hitting t on my keyboard to go back to the type tool and then clicking on the text by the way i'm going to change this to that booty and now another thing that might be worth considering is if we kind of realign this layout a little bit right here we need to change the size of all of this i think um, i'll hit Control t again to resize this now i think it might be cool to change the text color right here to maybe match the red let's try that out so you need to highlight the entire word then click into the color and then sample like that there we go right i think that looks quite neat now it's just a case of kind of resizing and filling out this space a bit better because ideally we want our design to be quite big i also want this text to be behind the graphic not in front of it so i'm going to just drag this layer down right here and behind our graphic layer and we'll do the same at the bottom right here let's uh, select all this text and change the color to red. And then once again, try and resize this so it fills out more of the space, but at the same time, it shouldn't be overpowering the graphic. So it's a case of kind of trying and resizing for a while until it looks good and balanced. I think that's heading the right direction. There we go. Now let's see if that also works in the dark color. If we change this to black right here. Yeah, I think that also works quite well on black considering we've got the red text now. So there we go. I think that's pretty much it. Obviously we could try and fill out the space a little bit more right here it's white space but you don't have to overcomplicate it this is easy to read it's got a clear message it's got a good graphic the font matches kind of the niche of pirates so don't overcomplicate it uh, keep it simple and effective uh, i think this design looks pretty decent now to export it so we can upload it to our print on demand marketplace of choice we just need to disable the background layers so we don't have an actual background color we have this transparent pattern right here and then we'll go to file export as png and there we go it's got the right dimensions already preset you give this a name as well and then we'll click save right here and they'll be downloaded to your device so that concludes the process obviously you could use the same graphic and apply some other phrases that you saw or you could repeat the process and now do research um, for another niche and create a whole different design if you're looking for an easier and more time efficient way to generate ai art very quickly with ideogram dali 3 or even flux then look no further than this tutorial right here